Hello everyone. Today we are going to design a simply supported two-way slab. Let us read the question and write the given data. Design a reinforced concrete slab 6.3 into 4.5 meter. The longer span should be taken as LY and the shorter span should be taken as LX. Simply supported on all the four sides. It has to carry a characteristic load of 10 kN per meter square. So the live load is given as 10 kN per meter square. Assume M25 concrete and Fe415 steel. FCK is given as 25 and Fi is given as 415. Assume that the exposure condition to the environment can be classified as mild. First, we have to check whether it is a two-way slab or one-way slab. For that, we have to find the ratio of Ly to Lx. 6.3 upon 4.5, we will get 1.4, which is less than 2. So, it is a two-way slab. Now, let us start designing. First, we need to find the thickness of the slab. For that, we have to use the ratio span to effective depth. Let us open the code book IS456-2000 page number 39. For slabs spanning in two directions, the shorter of the two spans should be used for calculating the span to effective depth ratios. That is why I have used here LX. For the simply supported slabs, it is 35 but it is only applicable slabs of shorter spans and the loading up to 3 kN per meter square. In our case, LX is 4.5. It is more than 3.5. So the span is large. Live load is 10 kN per meter square. So it is more than 3 kN per meter square. In this case, the load is heavy. So we have to use a value less than 35. Let us assume that Lx upon D is equal to 25. When we apply Lx, we have to apply as millimeter. 4.5 meter is equal to 4500 millimeter. Let us apply that. In this way for D, we will get 180 millimeter. Now let us see how to find the clear cover. For that, we have to open this code book, page number 47. From the question, we know that the exposure is mild. So the concrete cover is 20. In the notes, it has been given that for main reinforcement up to 12 mm diameter bar for mild exposure, the nominal cover may be reduced by 5 mm. In this designing, I am going to use 12 mm bars so we can reduce the clear cover by 5 mm. In this way, for clear cover, we will get 15 mm. We have designed the clear cover and the effective depth. In this diagram, this is the rebar in the shorter span Lx. These are the rebars in the longer span Ly. The effective depth D is the distance. From center of the rebar in the shorter span to the top, this is the half diameter of the rebar in the shorter span. We are going to keep the diameter as 12 mm. So the half diameter is 6 mm. This is the clear cover which we have got as 15. So to find the total depth D with the effective depth, we have to add the half diameter 6 and the clear cover 15 so that we will get 201 let us round that to 200 so we have to reduce the effective depth by 1 millimeter so the total depth d is 200 millimeter and the effective depth small d is 179 millimeter now let us find the effective spans first let us find it for the shorter span in this code book, we have to open the page number 34. The effective span of a member 
shall be taken as clear span plus the effective depth of the slab or beam or center to center of supports whichever is less so for the effective span from these two we have to select the smaller one clear span plus effective depth we will get 4.68 meter in the question nothing is mentioned about the support or supporting wall in this case we cannot consider this condition so we can take lx is equal to 4.68 meter in the same way for the effective span for the longer span we will get 6.48 meter now let us find the design load to get the design load we have to multiply the total load with 1.5 using this formula we can find the dead load we know that d is the depth of the slab it is 200 millimeter we have to convert that into meter for that we have to divide that by 1000 so that we will get 0 0.2 the breadth we have to always take as 1 rho is the density of the concrete which is 25 kN per meter cube for the dead load we will get 5 kN per meter square live load is given in the question as 10 kN per meter square when we add 5 and 10 we will get a total load as 15 the total load into 1.5 we will get the design load now let us go to the fourth step maximum factored movement and checking for depth we have to open this code book page number 91 there we can see both of these formulas in these two formulas we know w and lx to find the coefficients alpha x and alpha y we have to use this table because our slab is simply supported on four sides we have to find ly upon lx for that we will get 1.38 1.38 comes between 1.3 and 1.4 by using method of interpolation we can find alpha x for 1.38 for 1.3 alpha x is 0.093 and for 1.4 it is 0.099 first we have to take the alpha x for 1.3 which is 0.093 then a positive sign because the values keep increasing then the higher value minus smaller value divided by 1.4 minus 1.3 into for which we have to find alpha x that is 1.38 minus the first value 1.3 in this way for 1.38 for alpha x we will get 0.0978 now let us find alpha y the procedure of interpolating is same but the values are decreasing so here we have to use a negative sign for 1.38 alpha y will be 0.0518 now in these two formulas let us apply the values and find mx and my the maximum movement is mx which is 48.19 kN meter now we are going to apply a check for the maximum depth from this code book in the page number 96 we will get this formula in this formula we need to find x u max upon d that one we will get from the page number 70 our fi is 415 for that x u max upon d is 0 0.48 let us apply that in this way we can make a formula for d if possible you can memorize this formula now let us use the formula and find the required depth when we use the formula we have to apply all of the values in newton and in millimeter 1 kilo is 1000 and 1 meter is 1000 millimeter so for m max we will get 48.19 into 10 power 6 newton millimeter we know that fck is 25 breadth is 1 meter 
we have to convert that into millimeter so that we will get a thousand when we calculate this we will get 118 our depth is more than that our depth 179 is enough now we are going to do the fifth step which is the calculation of AST that is area of the steel first let us take the shorter span we need to find mx upon bd square mx we have calculated b is the breadth we know that we have to keep the breadth always as 1 meter which is 1000 millimeter the effective depth is 179 when we calculate this we will get 1.5 we have to find the reinforcement percentage pt for that we have to open the book sp16 table number 3 which is in the page number 49 our fi is 415 m upon bd square is 1.5 for 1.5 the percentage is 0 0.449 now using this formula we can find the area of the steel i will show you later from where we will get this formula ast will be equal to ptbd upon 100 using that formula we can find the area of the steel in the shorter span finally we will get 803.71 mm square now we are going to design the spacing for that we have to open this book table 96 we have kept the diameter as 12 we have to find the area equal to or little more than 803 808 is nearly matching in 808 the spacing is 14 centimeter that means 140 millimeter so provide 12 millimeter diabase at the spacing of 140 millimeter and the area will be 808 millimeter square the area is given in centimeter square so 8.08 .08 centimeter square when we multiply that with 100 we will get in millimeter square now we have to apply a check for the minimum reinforcement we have to open this code book page number 48 the mild steel reinforcement in either direction in slabs shall not be less than 0.15% of the total cross-sectional area. However, this value can be reduced to 0.12% when high strength deformed bars are used. In our case, FI is 415, so high strength bars are used. So we have to take 0.12%. The value of B is 1000, the total depth is 200. For the minimum AST, we will get 240 mm square, but our area is 808 mm square, which is more than that, so it is safe. Also, we have to apply the check for the maximum diameter. The diameter of reinforcing bars shall not exceed 1 eighth of the total thickness of the slab. The total thickness is the total depth D. 200 upon 8 it is 25 our diameter 12 is less than that so it is safe also the spacing of the steel should be less than three times the effective depth in this case also it is safe now we are going to find the area of the steel for the long span we need to find the effective depth for the long span that is the dy the effective depth for the long span will be from the top to the center of this rebar. So to find dy from d which is 179, we have to subtract the half diameter of this bar. Let us keep the diameter as 12, so the half diameter will be 6. Also we have to subtract the half diameter of this bar which is also 6, so for dy we will get 167 for my upon bdy square we will get 0 0.91 now let us take sp16 table number 3 which is in the page number 49 our fi is 415 we have to check any closer values to 0 0.91 
we can take 0 0.9 for 0 0.9 it is 0 0.261 our value is 0 0.91 so we can increase the value little more a 0 0.264 otherwise you can do interpolation now using this formula we can find the area of the steel now we are going to find the spacing we have to find the area value nearer to 440.88 we can take 452 in 452 the spacing is 25 centimeter so provide 12 millimeter dia bars at the spacing of 250 millimeter and the area is 452 millimeter square we have designed the bars for the short span as well as for the long span the AST minimum is 240 in both of the cases it is safe for the long span we have to also check for the diameter and spacing it will be safe now we are going to apply the check for shear we need to find the shear force in both of the directions then we have to find the shear stress using these formulas we will get these two values now let us take this book page number 73 from this page only we have taken the area formula in the short span pt is 0 0.449 0 0.449 is nearer to 0 0.5 our grade is m25 here the shear force is 0 0.49 so tau c y and tau c x are greater than tau c so it is safe against shear now we are going to apply the check for deflection in this code book let us take the page number 38 we can use this formula in the short span we have found two AST values the required one and the provided one for FS we will get 239.42 the value of PT in the short span is 0.449 we have to use this chart and to find the modification factor the curves are meant for FS values our FS is 239.42 it is approximately equal to 240 so that we can use this curve PT is 0.449 it will come around somewhere here here we have 1.2 it is 1.4 so the center should be 1.3 the line is a little above the center so that we can take us 1.35 now using the span to effective depth ratio we can find D here we have to use the basic value for simply supported it is 20 K is 1.35 for D we will get 173.33 our effective depth is more than that hence it is safe against the deflection if it is not safe you have to write the slab has to be redesigned then you can stop now let us apply the check for cracking the design has to satisfy these three conditions we know that it is satisfies hence it is safe now we are going to end this session thank you for watching this video